Hey, how are you doing? I, I hope you're doing well. This is an any percent run of Full Throttle Remastered. I am Prolix. Uh, my voice is a little familiar. It might just be because I, I read donations sometimes and, and stuff. Uh, but this is my first run, my first submission, my first uh, speed game ever. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a point and click adventure game. Uh, when I was thinking of what to run, I'm like, ah, I love those. Does anybody do that? And sure enough, some people do. So there you go. Um, we're, we're playing as uh, Ben Throttle here, uh, the leader of a biker gang called the Polecats. And our, uh, they're, they're good guys overall, not like uh, this guy we're going to run into here. He's, he's a member of the Rot Dealers. They're, they're evil and stuff, so I'm going to punch his lights out to move on. Uh, skip a bunch of cutscenes here that, that skip some story, but I'll fill you in on that. So we wake up, our motorcycle trashed, uh, needing a bunch of parts to get it fixed. Uh, this mechanic here, her name's Maureen, she's going to help us out with that. So you just got to go through all this. Um, so unfortunately, while there is a skip dialogue and a skip cutscene command in the game, sometimes when it's just been running too long or for whatever reason, they, they kind of stop responding as quickly as they otherwise should. I, I don't know what, what's up with that, just an engine... Uh, quirk or something like that but uh right now i'm definitely not skipping things as fast as i'd like so the, the time will artificially inflate over what it should be but that's totally cool because this would be pretty representative of an average run that way so uh so yeah i'm trying to skip all this just as fast as possible and uh yeah so i'll fill you in on what happened uh one fateful day, uh, Ben and his motorcycle gang, now they, they were riding down the highway and they ran into Malcolm Corley, who's the head of Corley Motors, uh, in this world, which is near future post-apocalyptic, kind of a Mad Max-like. Um, Corley is the last motorcycle manufacturer in the country. You know, it's, it's not called Corley Davidson, but the association is clearly there, you know. And Malcolm Corley seems like a good dude, like more biker than executive. And he asked Ben if him and the Polecats would escort him to his annual shareholders meeting, which is coming up at the Corley Motors headquarters. Um, well, Ben and the Polecats, they're all rough and tumble. They're like, oh, we're, we're not babysitters. We're not for hire. We don't do that sort of thing. So they turn him down. And Malcolm's like, all right, that's cool. But he has, he has some drinks with them, and, and you're done. Um, unfortunately, along with Malcolm was his evil second-in-command, Adrian Ripburger, and a couple of henchmen. So Ripburger managed to trick Ben's gang into thinking Ben had accepted the job, he had a change of heart, and he had gone ahead to scout the route to the Corley Motors headquarters. So Ben's gang goes on without him, thinking he's already ahead of them when really he's behind them and, and trying to catch up. So they also sabotaged, sabotaged Ben's bike after throwing him in the dumpster. So that's why I'm trying to get parts here in this, uh, this small town called Melonweed. And yeah, I did just put a piece of meat into a car and then lure a junkyard dog into that car and then lift the car with an electromagnet to uh, to get the dog out of my way. Yeah, that that's standard. So <laughs> I'm almost done with the puzzles here in Melonweed. I just have to lure some cops away from the roadblock they'd set up for me because I stole gasoline from them. And then uh, we just skipped Probably the, the biggest cutscene where Adrian Ripburger and the henchmen finally murder Malcolm Corley in their plot to take over the company. But luckily, the reporter who saved us when we crashed earlier, she was there hiding and she got photos of it. She gives us the uh, undeveloped negatives and says, here's a fake ID to get past the roadblocks that have been set up because you're a murderer. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, get a ride out of town and try to set things right. So Ben knows what's up now. Maureen, him, and his gang have all been implicated in the murder of Malcolm Corley. He has to catch up with his gang, uh, get this evidence that Adrian Ripburger is actually the murderer into the right hands, and, you know, save the day, clear his name, Maureen's name, his biker gang's name, all of that. So, um... Before I talk more about the game, I just thought I'd mention like what a what a big fan I am of LucasArts uh, adventure games. I'll uh, see. I've got the original CD here. Uh, that's the DOS version, though. I'm not not playing that. I'm playing the remaster, of course. Um, I have the Gone Jackals album Bone to Pick, which is the uh, they're the biker gang. They're an authentic metal biker gang that did uh, that album, and LucasArts collaborated with them on 
that and most of the soundtrack for the, the no game. Cowboy. So I got to uh, pick up some fertilizer here off the road. Um, <laughs> the fertilizer is from the trucker who gave us a ride out of the town earlier. Uh, he got waylaid by a biker gang called the Cavefish. And the Cavefish, unfortunately, blew his truck up while he was um, on the bridge that crosses the Poyahoga Gorge. So now the bridge is out, and of course the Poyahoga Gorge stands between Ben and his gang at Corley Motors headquarters. So I have to figure out a way across the Poyahoga Gorge. Uh, luckily, I already know the way. Uh, you find out in-game that there is a stuntman named Ricky Myron who long ago uh, made an evil Knievel-like jump across the Poyahoga Gorge you know, before they even built a bridge. So I'm going around getting the parts I need to replicate uh, his jump, which, you know, the first one was a hover fan from a hover car. And I stole that after having made the, uh, those were the henchmen. I made them crash by running into the fertilizer. And then I'm just going to um, come up here and encounter uh, some guys on the road here. This is the old mine road section. The first encounter is always Father Torque. Father Torque. As, as he said, uh, he's the former leader of the Polecat. So he's like a retired biker, just kind of runs around the old mine road, giving out bits of wisdom. Uh, and the lady here with the red hair, she has the chainsaw, which is the most powerful weapon. She's like susceptible shoppers, huh? Have, um... <laughs> to the fertilizer that I picked up. So you just throw a little bit of that in her eyes, and now I have the chainsaw. So now I'll be able to defeat... Almost anyone I encounter, I'm looking for a rot wheeler like this guy that we affectionately refer to as Clambake. <gasps> and it's Clambake! How you doing? Alright, so here's why, you know. I see Clambake! I mean, just, <laughs> when you knock him off his motorcycle, he exclaims Clambake. I don't know what else to tell you. So, uh, there's a couple other things on our to-do list here on the old mine road. Uh, we don't need to fight any more rot wheelers. We do need this guy, though. This is one of the cave fish. They look like Tuscan Raiders from Star Wars, or, you know, the Sand People, uh, because, you know, this was a LucasArts game, so there's a lot of Star Wars references. So we just move in with the 2x4 that we got from Clam Bank, and we whack him on the back of the bike, and that knocks him off. So now I've got my goggles, and um, I'm going to stay on the old mine road because I'm looking for uh, a guy with a chain, and this guy coming up here who has a pre-regulation destroyer-class solid fuel recoil booster, which... Ben would say if, if I gave him the time, but I'll skip that because that, that dialogue takes a long time. You have to encounter the guy with the recoil booster once. You can't even fight him that first time. And then to defeat him, I actually needed this guy. So this order has worked out quite splendidly. Um, I'll just defeat him with the chainsaw real quick, and I get his chain whip here. And the chain whip uh, lets me lasso the guy with the recoil booster off his ride. Because basically every other time you fight the guy with the recoil booster, he's just like, oh, peace out, you know, and, and he uh, just jets away from you. So there's Father Torque again. We don't need him, so I just skip that. Um, and this is where the RNG comes in. You know, I got, this is uh, this is really decent RNG. It's not the, the best I've ever seen, right? But uh, this will be What's like that? a better Lit than divers. average time. But I have seen the row just completely mess with me, give me like 10 rot wheelers in a row or so, and uh, that's why my estimate will be nice and high, is to account for um, just running into the wrong stuff here. So I'm going to put on the goggles that I got from the cave fish and enter their secret hideout cave, and then we're going to steal the ramp. It's Ricky Myron's original ramp. They have it here in their cave. And with the hover fan and the recoil booster from that guy and the ramp in place, we'll be all set to uh, make the jump of the Poyahoga Gorge. It's it's actually a fun cutscene, if, if only I had time to play it, but we gotta save the frames. <laughs> so, uh, we'll be heading past... Th those are the two... the first two main puzzle sections of the game. You know, when your bike's broken and melon weed and you need all those parts, and then when you have to figure out how to jump the gorge here. So we're gonna be moving to the end game, where, again, we're gonna clear your name, Maureen's name, your bike biker gang's name by you know presenting evidence that adrian ripberger was actually the the murderer uh the problem is you find out that the shareholders meeting where you were going to try to sting him isn't allowed to happen while the murderers are still outstanding you know everybody thinks you did it so we're going to find a way to uh, fake our own death in a little bit we got your hat so what i'm doing here is I know already I need to, oh yeah, I should have split there. Uh, I need to obtain this bunny to um, 
well, blow it up and get a battery out of it to use on that remote control car. And the way I'm going to blow it up is go over here to where the Vultures biker gang hideout is. And turns out Mo is a member of the Vultures, so she's hanging out with them. I want to get to her and talk things over. So no. to get past the minefield, I'm going to need a lot of bunnies to march for me <laughs> and clear the minefield. So we use this bunny to get a battery to use in the RC car, and that'll distract the souvenir vendor while I steal the box of bunnies, which he had behind the counter. And uh, that's that's all I'm going to be doing right now. And then we're gonna we we're gonna get to the vultures' hideout. Special we're gonna be able to talk to Marine. We're, we'll convince her that we were actually like friends with the dad when we met okay, Malcolm Corley the one time. You know that, that he was cool with us. And then we'll get her to develop the film that we have, and that'll prove that it was Adrian Ripberger, not us, who who uh, murdered him. So then she starts trusting us again, and we realize that uh, instead of clearing our name, it'd be easiest. Or, or getting apprehended. It'd be easiest to fake our own deaths. <laughs> um, one moment here while I unleash all this furry fervor on the minefield. Yes, the March of the Bunnies. Okay, uh, I'm going to pick some extras up because that's quicker than letting them all naturally march downfield, you know. Uh, it unfortunately does clutter up your inventory so it's fierce, but, you know. Um, anyway, we're... Mo and I are going to end up no. in a demolition derby no. where we're going to try to blow no. up each other's cars. Unfortunately, Ripburger sends the henchmen in with us to too, to and they try to play spoiler, no. but to there's a puzzle to, to solve to get around that. No. That bunny was, uh, he was pretty ace there. He got like six steps up there without blowing up. That's pretty funny. Good off. for him. I don't want to um, off. I don't want to mm. Some people who run this will set, set off their bunnies near the edge of the screen because the bunny can't move left and right that way. Or at least left or want, right, I, I don't want to, and I don't want to set that off reduces the off any of these, you know number of squares they possibly that. hit before this part's done. Mm. There, oh, I thought that was—I was so sure that was far enough. Okay, well we'll keep spam clicking here because I'm almost spam, far enough to just to trigger being at the headquarters. Nope, not quite. Um, so you just lay down bunnies and let them blow up and clear a path for you. That's all there is. So a little bit of interrogation by Marine. Uh, she's she's very uh, she's very gentle here. There's nothing go, nothing uh, nothing bad going I'm on here. Me. I'm sure this will be fine for Ben. <laughs> but good thing I'm able to talk my way out of that. She develops the film, realizes that it was Rip Burger and not us who killed her dad. Uh, there's the plan for the for the uh, demo derby here, and, and we're in it. Um, so I'm just going to go through this part. Again, like you can see how the cutscenes aren't skipping super fast. And that's totally not me. It's just something that happens with the engine sometimes. But um, So I'll just skip through that dialogue because I don't need to know about it. So we're going to push this orange car over here and use it as a miniature ramp to jump on top of the, the car that the henchmen are in. Because if I go in the um, upper right part of the screen right now, the henchmen, they keep me away from Maureen no matter what. Uh, their AI is tuned like really high, so yeah, uh, this is all we got to do here is um, crash to fake our own death, and that'll be enough to um, get the shareholders meeting to happen. And then I'll take the evidence to the shareholders meeting, and we'll expose Adrian Rickberger, who's uh, voiced by Mark Hamill, by the way, um, of Star Wars fame. Okay, so I'm just going to. That. Now that my cars have crashed, I'm out here in my asbestos suit. I'm going to set the stadium on fire to get everybody to evacuate. Unfortunately, the henchmen try to stop me one last time, but I'm going to foil them for good by jumping into this fire here. Uh, and they are dumb enough to chase me, and they do not have asbestos suits. So that's that's about that's the last we'll be seeing of them. Um, so we, we get Ben and Marine here to... You know, Marines like, look, take take this evidence. I don't even want it. I don't want to think about that. Do with it what you will. Type of stuff. And we're gonna get into the uh, headquarters here. Okay, so we stop at uh, the floor safe. I know the combination already because uh, I played it before. Uh, it never changes. We get a bunch more evidence. Uh, it's it's Malcolm Corley's recorded will about how he wants the company to go to Marine instead of that crook Adrian Rickberger. Um, so we now we just need to figure out a way 
to present it to everyone, which I'll do by causing a distraction with the projector and then projecting my own uh, stuff. And so then Adrian runs away, Mo takes over the company, we ride off into the sunset, everybody's happy, um, except, like I said, Adrian got away. So out of nowhere, here he comes, he knocks me off my bike, uh, Moe's uh, gets knocked under the truck. Is she okay? Who knows? Her fate is undecided at this point. Uh, <laughs> but there's a whole uh, end game puzzle sequence here where we uh, take out uh, Adrian's attempt to... Uh, so he's he's got this rogue semi-truck. He's ran us over. He's trying to kill us. But he's heading toward the Poyahoga Gorge. And suddenly, out of nowhere, the vultures of Moe's biker gang, they show up with a cargo plane that you've never heard about because I've been skipping all the cutscenes. They've been trying to get it rolling. Rolling. Just taxi. Not flying. They come up with this cargo plane and try to. And they've been getting it rolling the whole game. They finally get it underway and uh, they use it to swallow up the semi truck. But then we're right at the edge of the Poyahoga Gorge. So we're about to fall in and uh, I've got to first you know, take care of. Uh, Take care of Adrian Ripper, obviously. So we're gonna drop him off. Um, so say goodbye, Adrian, and then we got to get back before this whole thing goes up in flames. Uh, so luckily, our bike's still here because he ran us over. So it got jammed into the car and or the truck, and you take off. Obligatory, cool guys don't look at explosions. Cutscene as we race out of the semi truck, uh, cargo plane monster there hanging off the gorge. Isn't it great that we're all better people? Uh, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's full throttle remastered for you. Um, was a game to him. Small memorial, of course, and to Malcolm Corley at the end with all the By bikers paying mood. their respects because he was the cool old man, you know. He uh, was. Got caught up by some, some greedy corporate underlings, but we said things right. So, uh, there you yeah. go. Uh, that's all for me. An inspiration. Uh, hope you liked it. I don't know how many. Oh point and click adventure games have been run or if they have a chance to get in freedom why not figure it throw it out there thanks a lot <laughs> bye gave us wings